What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. I've got a very special father-son edition of the podcast to bring you guys today. Former professional boxing champion Jason Papion joins me on the show, along with his son, up-and-coming professional boxer Keon Papion. Keon is a five-time national champion. He is 1-0, looking to go 2-0 tomorrow night. His father, Jason Papillon, shared the ring with some of the greatest fighters in the 90s, including Bronco McCart and Winky Wright. It's a big honor to have him on the podcast today, so get down there, smack the subscribe button, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with Jason and his son, Keon Papillon, on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Jason Papillon, along with his son, Keon Papillon. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. All right. Let's let's just start it right, to, uh, right here. If you could please just take a second here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay. I'm a retired professional boxer, former NABF Super well- Welterweight Champion. Former WBU International Super Welterweight Champion, former USBS International Super Welterweight Champion, fought Winky Wright for the IBF World Title. I lost, uh, I got stopped, lost, and I was Roy Jones' sparring partner for like ten years. <laughs> wow, Keon, I'm sure you've heard all those uh, credentials once or twice. There, I would tell us a little bit about yourself here. Oh, man, I'm a recently turned professional fighter. But one and oh, I feel like I'm making my debut all over again. Uh, a heavily camp accomplished amateur fighter. For uh, I'm what five national titles should have been six, should have been more than that, but it is what it is. Yeah, very cool. We're gonna get to your upcoming fight in just a second here. Uh, Jason, you don't have yes, to be t- too accurate here, but about how old were you when you became a dad and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on oh, life? Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, I was 26 years old. I was 26 years old, and um, it it changed my life a lot. You know, I mean, uh, it made me more responsible. You know, it, it it taught me how to love kids more when you're having your own. You know, and it just changed me. Just just trying to be the best father that I can to my kid. <clears throat> And, and Kia, what was it like for you uh, growing up with your dad as a professional fighter? And when did you decide that boxing or fighting was something that you wanted to do? Uh, well, he was always on the road a lot and fighting and out of town a lot. So, you know, it was kind of, it was moving. It was, it was, kinda, it was a hype. But when I started, I mean, he tried to force me into it and I never really liked it at first. And But I always would be in school and around everyone on the street and all that just fighting. But I never wanted to box, and when I made my mind to come back, it was I was 16. Yeah, wow, uh, very cool. And you know, I wanted to get your opinion on this, Jason. You said you sparred with Roy Jones Jr. Obviously, we just had with Tyson Jones Jr. But on the undercard, uh, you had the Paul versus Nate Robinson fight, which was kind of like more of a spectacle thing here. And Nate Robinson, a guy that's never thrown a professional punch in his life, got five hundred thousand dollars for the fight. Wow. And it seems that it seems kind of unfair to the professional fighters that are out there uh, doing this for a living. So what what kind of uh, what, what was your opinion on, on seeing like a, a Jake Paul, Nate Robinson type of fight on, on what was a pretty decent sized card? Well, I mean, I didn't know they got paid that much. I mean, that's that's a disgrace. You know, I mean, I've, I've boxed for 18 years and never came close to a payday like that. And then you have Jake Paul and Nate Robinson who who have never stepped in a ring before. His first fight, he makes five hundred thousand. They could have called me. I would have fight Jake Paul. I, I would have, I would have fight both of them on the same night. You know? Yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of um, an insult to a lot of the professional fighters. Just the way that it was handled, they kind of made it more of a more of a gimmick thing than a professional uh, uh, sporting event that we all love. So, Keon, what was your thoughts on? It? I mean, you watched it. I mean. Well, I mean, it seems like the the ideal fight, instead of going for all the titles and all stuff, would be a fight against a guy like Jake Paul, who's not even a boxer. What did you think of that? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not really. I didn't. I wasn't worried about the money. It was just I'm more worried about the exposure. Like, why did they get that type of exposure? And they'd never been in a ring before, or amateur or anything. So, I mean, like, why would you even put them on that type of card? But they got people from kids fighting all the way till they grown, and they don't even get that type of exposure. 
Yeah, I, I thought it was a little bit of a disservice here. Uh, and Jason, what is it like for you now? You've been doing this your entire life. What is it like for you as a dad to watch your son get in the ring now at the professional level and, and fight? What is it like for you as a dad to see that? Well, it's it's like living all over again through boxing. I'm going to cut the, the fire, fire off on the pot. It's like living all over again, you know. I, mean, I get to watch my son probably accomplish something that I haven't. I didn't have a chance to do. Well, I mean, not have a chance, but I didn't accomplish. You know, I can I get a chance to see him fight for a world title and possibly win it. You know, and I just just watching him grow up into a a, a man. You know, a man a a man a boxer that that wants to be the best. You know, and I love it. Yeah, well said, Jason. And, and Keon, what is I know as a son, we always try to you know we always try to impress our fathers. We try to live up uh, to our dads. What is it like for you um, to be in there fighting and having your dad looking on at you? I mean, it's it's big and all, but we we have our own like I have my own goals and like and what I want is far like far surpassing what he wanted. So. I mean, but it's great to have him there. Like, a lot of people don't have that, and I really don't see nobody else being my coach around here for that, so. Yeah, good stuff. And then drawing it back into you as a father there, Jason, what, what, type, now, what type of disciplinarian were you as a dad with Keon growing up, and is it different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Oh, it definitely was. I mean, it's, 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 it's sort of different in a way because when I was brought up, the way I was brought up, I mean, it was – it was strict. You know, I had a dad, you know, my dad was real tough on us, you know, and we couldn't get away with nothing. And my, my mom was right there. She she backed my dad up, you know, and and it was great. You know, I mean, I, it was great the way they raised us because it made us, me and my brother, the men that we are today, the loving father, the great husband that looks out for their family, you know, and I, we credit that to my dad and my mom for raising us. And, and the same with my son, you know, I tell him all the time, you know, son, you, you got it good. You and your sister have it good compared to the way me and my sister and brother had it. You know, my kids, they get away with a little more than my, 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 me and my siblings could have, you know, it's 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 a big difference now, you know, and, you know, they need to cherish that moment because, you know, that time with their parents and the way they're being raised, because it's it's a big difference now than the way we used to have. You know, we we need we parents today need to go back to the way our parents raised us. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there, Jason. I, I'm from that same type of schooling that I had from my my dad. I have four kids myself and I definitely find myself. Uh, a lot different in my discipline style. And I think a lot of that has been from this way that society has put pressure on us. This fact as the way that we handle our kids is being judged differently than it used to be. And I think, right. I mean, I, I talk about on my show all the time, we, we have a fatherless crisis going on in our country. We got too many kids are growing up without a father without. figure in their life. And that's causing devastation results on our society, especially uh, when, you know, I grew up with that, you know, just wait till your father comes home type of deal. And that was enough right. to really set me straight. And I think when we when we see that missing, we see a lot of problems in the community. I definitely agree. I, I agree 100 percent on that. You know, we fathers need to go back to the old way. You know, it would it would it would have we would have less crimes. We would have less less a lot of things going on in life. It's just it's the way you're being raised, you know, and yeah. let kids get away with too much now. I, I agree. And Keon, what would you say were the, were the top values that your dad has tried to instill in you as you were growing up? Top what? I, I didn't hear that. What would you say are the top values that your dad was trying to instill in you growing up? I had to be never to disrespect your elders, treat everyone the way you want to be treated, and always carry yourself like a good person. Yeah, very good. And, uh, you, you know, I, I know you have the fight coming up here now against Caleb Webb. <laughs> Uh, I know it's been a long layoff here since uh, the coronavirus and all that stuff. How has the coronavirus and this entire thing impacted your training schedule, routine, scheduling fights? And what is it going to be like for you to finally get back in the ring again here? Uh, man, at first, the virus, it kind of like I was still trying to train through everything. You know, my dad wanted to shut everything down, but I was still trying to train through everything and 
took me and it finally well the virus finally put me out the gym for like about at least two and a half weeks and well but everything since then has been going smoothly like i've been going like everything is back to normal mostly but i don't know how a layoff will really affect me because you know it's just like I only at one pro fight so I mean, we're in for it. <laughs> we're going to find out i guess yeah, we're all in kind of uncharted waters here when it comes to this. And, and Jason, I mean, you fought at a time period that I loved uh, watching during boxing. You mentioned Ricky right there. There were so many good fighters at the time, Felix Trinidad, Pernell Whitaker, and all these guys that really made the sport uh, so awesome to watch. And it just seems right. like uh, boxing has slipped off the, the, the radar a little bit. You got the UFC that's been overshadowing it a lot. Um, what do you think needs to happen here, Jason, to put boxing back on the primetime map here and make it the prolific sport that it always was? Well, I I don't think it's gonna happen, but it's 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 too much money now. You know, nowadays it's it's champions fighting to see who's gonna bring them the most money. See, when I was fighting, we wouldn't we weren't thinking about the money. We was competing to see who was the best. Oh, you think you can beat me? No, I can beat you. Then we fight. We wasn't looking to see who's going to bring me a million dollars, two million dollars. No, I think that that takes away from it, too. And then see, going back to the MMA, it's like they don't care. You know, you get in there and you see blood. You know, that's why it's, it's, it's taking over. And then it, it surpassed boxing because of the action in the ring. See, in the boxing, the action is not there because the. The, the good, good fighters are not fighting the good fighters that are on top. You know, it, they're fighting the guys that, oh, man, he's going to bring me the most money. I want to fight him, even though he done lost two or three fights. But his name, he, they're fighting the name instead of fighting the competition. Yeah, yeah, right on there. And I, I think uh, we, we see that, like we mentioned there, that like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, these guys are not great fighters, but they're no. great at advertising themselves. Exactly. They're great right. marketers. They're brilliant at marketing themselves and, and be able to sell themselves. And it seems like that's and even the UFC, Dana White. I've had Dana White on the podcast here, and the guy is just great at marketing his product. Right. I think he's done it so much better than boxing has. Exactly. Um, that's true. Get, Keon, a big part of this game that wasn't around for your father here, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all these things, you got to be on there in order to be trying to promote yourself. How much of that are you trying to get involved in building up your name and a brand for yourself that goes along with the tool sets that you have in the ring? Uh, I mean, I've never really been big on posting my things because, you know, I, I tend to let other people talk and post from me, which they have me doing, but. Uh, I'm learning eventually, like, I'm going to have to, like, I know I'm going to have to eventually, but, so I'm really starting to consider things to post, but, you know, I'm still, yeah, I'm working my way into it. Yeah, it seems almost like today, instead, instead of having a good corner man and a cut man, you also need a good social media man, like, in the yeah. corner there to be taking the videos and to do all this stuff. It's insane what's happened here right. with this. Um Jason, all right. Well, you've obviously had uh, you had a successful boxing career here. You're training with your son now. What kind of goals or plans do you have here for yourself for the future? For myself, well, I have a um, I have an I established a nonprofit organization called JAF, which is Journey to the Adulthood, to where we 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 take kids in and 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 mentor them and and show them boxing. I do also have Bo Papillon's Boxing Club. To where we teach discipline and 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 the 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 skills of boxing to, to defend yourself and just to have an advantage in life, you know. And that's that's what we that's what myself and my partner Chris Ozine, That's what we're trying to do. And and also, you know, I mean, we 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 take these guys, some of the some of the amateur boxers, and we we take them to compete. You know, the national tournaments, man, like as I did with my son and a couple of other fighters. We just we just trying to give these young kids the opportunity that we had. You know, and that that's the most important thing, man, is giving these kids a view of something they can become and then they strive to become that. Yeah, that's awesome, Jason. So, so many of the guys do do that and give back. I've had Buster Douglas on here. He's doing that similarly. I've had Teddy right. Atlas on the show. Teddy Atlas is always involved with the kids in the community. So I love to see that always giving back and helping to bring the next crew up. Uh, right. Keon, what about for yourself here? Obviously, you got the fight coming up now. 
Uh, what are your goals? What are your plans here for the future for yourself? Where do you see your boxing career going five years, ten years down the line here? Five years, I, I want to be a world champion, but that's – and nowadays, that's that's too small, man. I, I'm looking to be a multi-divisional world champion, move all the way up to heavyweight, win a world title there. Just call it a successful career, be undefeated, and just be one of the pound-for-pound greats, a Hall of Famer, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, love the vision there. All right, uh, Jason, I'm going to wrap this up here. I usually, I, I love to ask, uh, last thing I'm going to hit you with, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast here, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Just be there for your kids. Be there for your kids, man. Listen to them and just take time out with them. Let them know how much you love them, how much you care, how much you want to see them succeed. You got to be there for the kids, man. You you can't let them go astray and get caught up on the outside. Keep it in the inside home and become the best dad, you know? Yeah, very well said. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Jason Papillon, you're a first-class father all the way. Keon, thank you so much for giving me a few thank minutes you. of your time here. Best of luck with the fight career. And thank you for giving Thanks. me a few minutes of your time on First Class Fatherhood. Thank you, Mr. Alex. It was great having us. Thank you again. Thanks, Mr. Alex.